Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome back to another uh, episode of our unboxing uh, videos. This time it will be the Stone Crows. Um, last time we did the Winterfell Guards and the Harmer Vanguard, and we had some, yeah, let's say, I had some camera issues with the focusing. Uh, and you might relate. I, 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 I know that a lot of people like out there had um, or have problems like, you know, focusing the, the units and stuff. So I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will be better today. So, um, yeah, bear with me here. So the Stone Crows, we already did a few weeks back. Uh, Randall and I did a did a review when when basically they got revealed and we basically knew all the stats uh, and the and the uh, rules uh, but by then already but my view on them changed a little and i can probably say there is that three point uh, method or three points of how how to make them work uh, we will discuss that later at the end of the video but first as promised there will be um, an unboxing so let's jump jump right in um so this is the box um the box um let's just quickly start with the with the um, uh, the artwork. I I totally love the artwork in general because it's really fitting the lore. It's really thematic. Um, so you know, uh, pillaging d down there in the in up in the hills and like taking whatever they need from from poor uh, villagers. So that's totally fine. Uh, I totally like that the artwork on the on the box is very close to the sculpts. I really like that. The only thing, like personally, I do not like about the the, the, the creative on, on the on the front is that there is no real focus on one particular character. So it's more like, you know, that one is a little bit off the side. This one is right here in the front, but you can't really see him. Um, and the other guys are in the back so that that's the only thing i can i can say but all, uh, all over i really like the graphics on this one so let's check the back of the card uh not the card the the, the box so obviously uh, it has four sculpts three each uh no attachment and just the unit card and uh it already reveals the um um graphics or the the artwork which is on the unit card so let's open it up Get that other way, that too. So this is what you get from the box. We'll check the cards later. So there's a Lannister version and a neutral version. We will um, uh, take a look at that later. So this is what you get out of the box. Get that a little closer to you. Um, so let's find it. Where is it? So here they are. This is in the box, how you would get it. So let's check the individual sculpts. I will start with the spear guy, the spearman. So let's check if this camera focuses. So that looks better. So the spear guy. Um, what I really like about this one is the amount of detail compared to the others, especially when you look at, the, uh, at his face and the wild hair he's got. Also, the shield is great. There's a little pouch on the back of the... Um, uh, belt and um, also this little this little armor piece armor piece right here and the gauntlet on his on his um, on his arm so really like this one this is probably I don't know if close to being my favorite I guess really great one and the fur will make it a little bit or easier to paint again um, which is good yeah, so let's check the second one. Second one has not um, a pose as dynamic as the first one, but uh, also I love this one. It's just standing there, right? Intimidating, intimidating presence. Um, not as much detail like on his belt, or you know, he's no. There's no armor. There's no shield. There's no gauntlet. But he has a pretty awesome helmet gives him the skyrim vibes right and the and the and the feathers up here in his hair or on the on the helmet really like that and you know standing there with his great axe looks cool and really different to the first one so the third one 
is my favorite one. I just decided spontaneously. So this one, this one is my favorite. So this one has a really high dynamic pose, right? Swinging his great axe. I do not like his helmet really much, but but uh, the whole pose and the whole um, movement you can feel from from the sculpt is really, yeah, doing it for me. So yeah, that's my most favorite one out of the box. Yeah, looks great. So, and the last one, which seems to be one of the, you know, <laughs> vets in the group, even though there's no, like, the, that that one, uh, uh, like, like uh, Bannerman attachment, this one particular one. This one looks, um, which is three times in the box, but looks pretty cool and looks pretty, you know, he has, he definitely has some leadership skills. So, um, yeah, here's the, the shield is pretty great with the feathers. Uh, also, he got some feathers in his hair, holding up this axe. There's a little dagger on the side. So this one does not lack any any amount of detail compared to the first one. And this one has actually no shirt on. So like a kind of barbarian kind of kind of guy, um, which which will when you paint it, which will give a lot of um, um, yeah different looks to to all of the uh, all of the guys yeah so that's the unboxing basically so uh, how about we jump into the card so as i said um, my perception of the um, of the stone crows changed a little bit over time i have to say so in our first video we basically said there is definitely this comparison or they have to compare themselves against the mercs Lysine cell swords, they have to compare uh, with the cutthroats. So, and and we basically, you know, we went out of that video saying they are in a weird spot in between, right? They, they through the order inside, they are supposed to do something aggressive, but they are not as aggressive as, as Lysine or uh, the cutthroats, right? So this is how we jumped out of them video but as again as i said uh my perception changed so let's start again with this uh regular profile so for five points this seems decent right the five movement hitting on fours six five four the four armor is quite good uh the seven morale isn't so especially when we look at the disorganized so but for five points this is still something i can i can go for right um so in the neutrals this unit is uh, what do you need it for when you have mercs and when you have cutthroats even when you have lysine cell source even though i think lysine cell source do not really work well in neutrals only they do work with highly aggressive commanders like gregor like you know carter pike and stuff um so this one what in the neutrals faction what does the stone crows really do and i the only thing i came up they are or they can be a really good tech piece for a certain game mode, which is Honed and Ready. So in Honed and Ready, this unit um, is really good because it has the four up safe and it has the recruitment from the hills. So even if your um, opponent is able to shoot a little bit at you and, and kill something, um, it, it won't really hurt much because of the recruiting from the hills and, and the safe. It won't be much. So it's a Great tech piece for this particular game mode. So when you know you play Hone and Ready and you want to have this unit just sitting on a token, this is one of the better units to have on a token. Um, they're not as good as like, sure, like 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 Wardens. Um, but if you have to um, choose and you, you do not play Baratheon, this might be a unit for you for this particular game mode. So when we check Lannisters on the other side, um, it's a it's a different thing. Um, so because they get Tyrion for free, so you could think about attaching it for free, but there's no real benefit compared to the Mercs, right? Because they have adaptive, and here you can attach it for free. It would be a different thing if Tyrion would be two points, where he actually should be in my book, but whatever. Um, so they cannot really compete with the Mercs when we talk about this, you know, this Tyrion for free feature. Um, so what, um, 
the stone cross what do they do for other factions so for other factions um they they are one of the best healing batteries uh for for factions that can use supply aid so supply aid basically makes them makes them a unit which which is an ever you, you know up they, they fill themselves up each and every round uh and you can you can supply aid off of it without using uh, the bags without using um, resources so for this this is basically their spot they're not as aggressive as cutthroats they're not as tanky as the mercs but they have this healing mechanism and together with the right attachment so davos for example this can be a really really good uh healing battery for the lannisters um I would actually not go to put Tyrion into it, even though it's on the back of the card and says it's free, right? Uh, probably, um, I'm thinking if if you do not put him into the Stone Crows, you might play him as a commander, bring those guys, and play it with the Gate Warden from the Gold Cloaks um, unit box, because this one, this attachment could make them uh, heal up at a maximum five uh wounds right uh because th through recruitment from the hills they would heal up three and through the gate warden if you have the, the the crown you would heal up to two so that will be a five heal on activation which is pretty pretty good so um but in the end um it will be an objective holder in my book it will be a healing battery and this is something the other two can't do so when we talk and what do the stone crows do in meta it will be this. It will be objective holder. It will be objective holder specifically in Hone and Ready. And it will be a healing battery for factions that can make a use of supply aid. So, yeah. And this is basically the roundup for the Stone Crows. If you, you know, if you, if you can think about any other attachment, any other thing I didn't see or we didn't see, please reach out, drop it down in the comments below or connect with us on the Discord. We are happy to chat on the Stone Crows because like in the end, like lore wise, thematic wise, a great, great unit, right? We really want to have them on the table, but there are still, as, as said, uh, in a tough spot between the Cutthroats and the Mercs. So, um, yeah. So happy to discuss on that one. So I want to end this video with just a little, little quick announcement on um, the Playmats EU cooperation. Uh, we basically um, uh, collaborated with them on building the best Song of Ice and Fire playmat we can think of. So this playmat um, is able to provide for beginners and as competitive players alike everything you need to play Song. Um, so basically they have the deployment zones uh put into it you have the objective tokens each and every one so even if you move the objective it does not matter you just you know you just push it back you always see where the objectives are and the tactics board on the other side you have the deck the discard the victory points you have place for uncus the missions the objectives obviously the tactics board also you have place up there on the on the right right next to me this one right next to me, uh, next to the Hits and Crits logo, you have two zones for uh, optional uh, or additional uh, tactic zones. So Water Gardens and uh, House of the Undying. Um, yeah, so we did a lot of like play testing and surveys around this map because we got some prototypes and this is the final version we can we came up with. This play mat is also available not with this uh, Bloody Dawn design which is from 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 hits and crits but it's also available in an ice ice land version uh in a crossroads version like basically with with uh, with a rocky road and uh you know gr gr the woods and green hills and stuff and also a rocky desert um battlefield if you don't if you do not li not like this this design um we also offer the tactics mat itself so let's say you have your final um or your most preferred battlefield already you might not need uh, another battlefield even though it has the deployment zones and objectives on it so this is the tactics mat for you so they're all on the discord you can uh, i will put the links to play mats you in the comments down below so even shipping globally is quite decent i would say so in europe um you would pay about 10 to 15 euros maybe and i checked to even to the us it would be around 30 to 40 uh dollars um depending on 
like uh, um, specific location, but um, it's it should be somewhere around there. So this is how we want to end the video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, we will continue the series. Uh, please put all the feedback down below. And until we meet again, roll those crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.